Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Well this week has been a rather interesting building week for me. I've sort of tried out a few new things there. Particularly I've been working with Amy a bit here. Now I found out just from playing around there that you can actually connect to Amy using a logic transmitter. Now I did play with these a while ago when they first came out and you could link them together and transmit data from one place to another like a cable. So I thought, well, that's pretty useless. But I've come back and had another look at it a few, well, many updates later. And I've noticed that now, quite by accident, I said it flicking through the settings here, I found you can hook it up to your hard suit. Now, so what? Yes, uh, but if we take a look at it with our tablet, look at our device properties, we find out it has all sorts of information and based on our suit, Right from our temperature settings, to velocities, uh, gas concentrations. But what we're really concerned with here is the position. So it's got our GPS positions there. Position X, position Y, position Z. Now position Y is our vertical position, so I don't really care about that one there. But our X and Z positions, I think, are going to become very handy. Now, it's because I've always wanted to use our beacon but let's switch on our beacon. We look at that one, it says it's using 300 watts of power. Now that's a bit power hungry for something to have on all the day. So if we have that on day and night, it means you have to generate 600 watts during the day. Now that's one and a half solar panels just for this device alone. So for that reason, a lot of people decide not to use it. That's for that reason that I built a, built a lighthouse up on the hill over there to help me find my way home. There it is over there. Something I've always thought would be very handy is if the base knew how far away you were. So it could automatically switch the beacon on as soon as you wandered too far away. But I've never been able to do that. But now that the, this machine knows where I am, I should be able to tell them, get the base to figure out where I am and how far away I am. So let's see what we can do. First up, let's just try reading a position from this one and we'll probably display it on a screen. Now, step one. We have the transmitter set to pin D0, the beacon set to pin D1, the display set to pin D2. They're just naming our pins to make our code a bit easier to read. Now, in our main loop, what we're doing is loading from the transmitter position X, saving it into our temporary variable R0. Then we immediately save it to the display setting R0. So we confirm that, export it, switch on, and we should be good. Switch it on, there we go. There is our dis position. Okay, so it's not reading us forwards and back, it's our left and right position. We can see it changes as we move. Good -o. So, now, that's a position from an absolute zero position. We want to know our position from right here. So for this, we'll use a GPS tablet, uh, which is pink one I think it was. There we go. So if we stand right here in front of our computer, we can see that our X and Z positions are both minus 15. So if we put them into the code and then just get the code to figure out how far away we are from those positions and display that as a reading. Radio. Okay, so we've put in our home X and home Z coordinates. They're both minus 15 that we got off the GPS. Now I've defined them as constants, so as the computer knows they're not going to change. I've written the, the names as uppercase letters, so as I know not to try and use them as a variable. So, once again, we've still got our line of code there to load the X position. Now, if we subtract the home, or if we take get the home and we subtract our current position from the home position, it should give us our distance from it. We'll save that back into R0 because we don't need to know that anymore. So we'll reuse our variable and then we save it back to the display. Confirm, export. All right, so our distance from home it changes. Now it does go negative in this direction because of course we're just subtracting there but we want to have a positive distance away in both 
both directions. So we shall just take the absolute value and once again, absolute value of R0 and we'll save it back into R0. So confirm that, export it. It should be positive in both directions now. Good O. So we're done. So now we just need to repeat that with the Z coordinates. So as we move forward and backwards, it'll pick up that one as well. And then once we've fixed our X and Z, we'll just take the whichever one of them is bigger. Radio. So we have just repeated the code we had for the X position and done it with the Z position. So we're loading the Z position, we're using the Z home coordinate and we're just saving it as a temporary variable R1. So now we have our offsets which are saved as R0 and R1. We just need whichever one of them is bigger. So we're just reusing variable R0, so we're just taking the maximum of R0 and R1 and just saving it back into R0 because that's the only value we need now. And we save it back to the setting, save it back to the display. So confirm, export that. Now if we move backwards and forwards, the number changes. Move sideways, that's giving us a bigger number the further we get away. Right, so now it's calculating our distance from where we are. We've just now got to get it to switch on the beacon when required. Now we've defined ourselves a new constant, which is just going to be our beacon distance. When, what distance do we want to be when it activates? Just for the purpose of testing, I've set that to 3. Of course, when you're using it for real, you probably set that to a bigger number of, say, 100 or 50. Or if you're having a lot of trouble with storms, maybe 20 or 10. Uh, okay, so we want to switch the beacon on. So to switch the beacon on, we've got to send it a true value. So, uh, so we want to ask ourselves, when do we want it to switch on? We want to switch it on when our distance from the base is greater than our th distance there. So we set when it's greater than, if our R0, the distance that we've calculated, is greater than our distance that we've set up here, switch it on. So set greater than, when R0 is greater than beacon distance, save it back into R0. We don't need the distance anymore, so we'll just reuse that variable again. So we set the beacon on value to R0. So if we're greater than that away, it'll set it to 1. If we're closer than that, it'll set it to 0 and switch it off. Right. Confirm. So when we switch that on, our beacon should go off. And it does. It knows we're close enough, so it switched it off. Now if I move away, move away, once I get to 3, it switches on. There we go. Once we get home again, it switches off to save us power. So there we go. No more forgetting to switch the beacon on and off. It'll do it for us. All right, hey. But we still have the issue of it still uses 300 watts when we're away. Uh, there's got to be a way around that. So in all the time I've been using it, I have never solved that. But I have seen on the workshop, somebody else has figured that out. And the answer was just so stupidly simple that's kind of embarrassing that I never figured it out. The answer was just to simply pulse the beacon on and off in a time period so as it's not always on. It's only got to switch on for a little bit every couple of seconds there, to, enough to give you a pointer on your, on your tablet and you'll be able to find your way home from there. So once again, the greatest answer is the simplest. Right, uh, and as it is such a fantastic answer, I'm not above using that answer. I, I admit it's a good one, I'll use it. So we just want to pulse it on and save power. So three more lines of code. We have, after we switched it on, we yield for one cycle, just to give it time to come on and give us a signal. Then we'll immediately switch it back off again, sleep for two seconds and jump back to the start of the code. So then it can go through, find out where we are and decide whether or not it has to switch it on again for another pulse. So it'll come on for one cycle and sleep for two seconds. So confirm that, export it. Now when we walk away, you see it's not updating our position instantly. It takes a couple of seconds. But once we walk away, we get our flashing beacon. So it's only on for a little bit, then switches off. So it's saving 80% of its power. So now we find that we are have an affordable beacon. If we switch it on, 
Lord Beacon is of course going to play up now, thank you. That's an annoying bug. There we go. So Beacon switches on. Oh no, I'm lost again. Oops, back there. Beacon. Over that way. And I've found it. I'm home again. It switches off. All i got to remember is where I left that. And I'll be good. So, there we have it. We've tamed the beacon. It now only uses a fraction of the power it used to. That switches itself off. We can just set and forget it now. And we'll never get lost. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'll manage it. Ah, uh, well, that's all for today. Till next time. Happy building. See ya.